it's hard to see the future. I know that because I could not see the future when I was 17, 18 years old. It, um, it reminds me of something I want to say to you boys who are anywhere between 17 and 22 years old. You guys call me all the time. When I was 17, I was the youngest student at Fordham University. I managed to get in and used my early entry into Fordham University as my excuse for leaving home. Fordham University at the time cost about $25,000 a year. Got every grant I could apply for. I'm not a member of any significant minority. And I got uh, four years of student loans. I borrowed the absolute maximum I could. And ended up spending it all in a year and a half. And I wasn't spending it partying. I wasn't spending it on drugs or booze. That was just strictly spending it on my daily expenses. Tuition, rent, books, basics. And in my second year of college, when I was just about broke, and I thought I was going to have to drop out of college, with my limited vision of life, I believed that I was A, because I was not going to A, graduate college, I was not going to be able to B, be successful at anything. I thought I would be lucky to get an average job and make an average paycheck, and therefore um, maybe have an average life like my parents did. My parents, who were married all the way till my dad died. My dad uh, was married from age 23 until he died, 40 years later. That's all I thought I would ever accomplish in life. I had been told by people in the radio business, oh, go to school, get a degree, this is important, you need to get it. And I was under the impression that if I did not get a degree, I could not be successful. I also had a meeting I've discussed with you on the radio with a program director, a guy named Dennis Moore, who was at a radio station named WGLI in Babylon, Long Island. Dennis, who well, clearly thought he could see the future, told me I had a lousy voice, a heavy accent, a speech impediment, and that I should consider another line of work because I wasn't going to succeed in radio. And I believed him. After spending a couple of days wanting to slip my wrists, I believed him. And so when you combine the fact that I could not afford to finish college, and the fact that I've been told by a guy employed in the radio business that I would never succeed, I decided that I would do the next best thing. I would get married and be happy. Fortunately, I didn't want to have children because that really would have uh, dug my grave in any number of ways. But I could not see the future when I was 22, 23, 24. And I was spinning my wheels trying to get into this business. My marriage ended because uh, my wife at the time decided she wanted to have kids and I knew I couldn't do that. I continued spinning my wheels. I'll never forget, um, when I was 23, I had a job at Citibank, answering the 800 number. Ever get your Visa card at the end of the month and it says, if you have questions about your bill, call this number, 1-800-whatever-the-number is. I was one of the people who picked up the phone. I was at the call center before it moved to South Dakota or wherever it is now, or India, whatever. And, um... There I was, answering questions about people's APRs, about duplicate charges on their visa bill. And uh, at that point in my life, I thought that I had reached the apex. Like, this was as good as it was going to get. And I did a lot of things at the time that in hindsight appeared to be self-destructive. You know, just kind of um, 
wasted valuable time in my life. Didn't travel at a time in my life when I should have been earning money and traveling. Didn't um, find alternative solutions like um, if I can't get a degree, try to learn this business the hard way by traveling to different cities around the country, living in small towns, developing an act. I didn't really have a mentor to help me out how to do this. I couldn't see the future. I had no idea what was ahead of me. I had no idea how good things would get, how good things could get, if only I didn't anchor myself down and give myself a, a big hole to dig myself out of. Wife, children, money, bills, finance charges, mortgages. Hell, I didn't own a house till I was almost 30. And at that, it was a small house that I bought for $60,000 in Phoenix, Arizona. When I lived in Miami, I didn't own a house. When I lived in Albany, New York, didn't own a house. Stanton, Virginia, couldn't even dream of affording a house. When I got to Phoenix and I saw $60,000 a year for the first time in my life, I bought my first house. And it was worth one year's salary, $60,000. Couldn't imagine buying a hundred and fifty thousand dollar house, much less a two and a half million dollar house like I have now. When you're eighteen, nineteen, twenty, even seventeen, many times it seems that you've done as well as you're going to do. Like the best you can hope for is just to have a nice girl who's a good piece of ass, and even if she's nagging you or telling you what to do all the time or wears the pants of the family, that's okay with you. Because that's what you grew up seeing your mom do to your dad. Or you just figure, you know, I'm a loser. This is all I deserve. This is all I am. But I want to tell you that uh, you can't predict what's going to happen to you. Especially if you're a man. Life gets better. You meet people. You have lucky experiences. If you work hard, you start seeing the fruits of your labor. If you told me at age 25 that I would be a millionaire, in other words, that I would have a million dollars in net worth, I'd have been thrilled to hear it, but I would hardly believe it. And then if you told me I would be a multi-millionaire, I'd have laughed my ass off. I never thought that would happen. There was a point in my life where I said, if I had a million dollars, I could quit, I could retire. Just live on that. Now, if I had a million dollars, I would feel like I was practically bankrupt. That's true. What I'm telling you, boys, is when you tell me I don't need a prenup because I don't have anything, what you're saying is I'll never be anything. This is as good as I'm ever going to get. Essentially, I give up. And at 18, you can't say that. At 19, 20, you don't know. You don't know. What I'm telling you, boys, is not to have all these obligations at a young age that you don't understand. Getting married will cost you hundreds of thousands of dollars, whether it works or not. More if it doesn't work. Having a child, raising a child from birth costs about a quarter of a million dollars now over 18 years. That's a lot of money. There's always the possibility that the woman you're with will turn into a complete bitch and kidnap your kid and you'll never see him again. Do you really want that? You can't see it now because she's such a nice girl, but you never know who she's going to meet. The guy down the block, the pizza guy, an attorney... Somebody will say to screw you over. Did you hear the guys who called in and got screwed over? What I'm telling you, boys, is travel light, I guess would be the easy way of saying it. No debt, no obligations, no future obligations. The best way to be prepared for the good fortune that will happen to you, for the success that will come to you, is not to dig yourself into a hole. Don't owe money to some bitch who was a good lay when you were 19 years old. Don't be 
be buying furniture on credit. Don't be buying cars you can't afford, houses you can't afford. Don't be having babies. You want to be ready for the success that is within your grasp. And unfortunately, because it's hard to be successful, there are times you can't see the future. And then you do stupid things that harm your possibilities of success. You get in your own way. You give yourself obstacles. Live a frugal lifestyle. Don't be wasting money on things like furniture, buying condominiums you don't understand, paying maintenance and all the daily expenses that go with owning real estate. Don't be getting married and handing over half of everything you might earn. Don't be having babies. The amount you'll have to pay to have that child will grow exponentially as your income grows. Even if you can't see the success you could have in the future, live your life like you are going to be successful. Don't make some of the mistakes I made. Some of the mistakes I didn't make because I just put my foot down. But at 18, I could not see what was awaiting me. Like an idiot, I got married. I got married to somebody who ended up wanting to have kids. It will kill your opportunities for success. My best friend in the whole world was a promising photographer, and、uh, he was amazing. And he married a single mother. One day, I walked into his dark room, and no, no longer was he developing film in there. He had stacks of bills, bills he had paid, bills that needed to be paid. Bills he couldn't afford to pay, all in separate piles. He said he didn't know that being a parent would be this expensive.、And、he ended up having to、um, to sell off his photographic equipment and go work for his dad's factory. This is a 100 percent true story. I learned at 24 years old. I saw what happened to my friend. I said, "This is not happening to me." And it was at 25 that I said, "You know what?" I'm going to Virginia. I'm becoming a radio guy. About how little I make, and I'm going to work at it until I am as good as I can be. I'm trying to pass this experience on to you boys. I don't tell you not to get married just so you can get laid. I'm telling you this so that you will be able to be successful without having a dream killer living at your home. A woman telling you don't come home late. How come you're at work all the time? How come you're schmoozing people all the time? How come you're having drinks with clients all the time? How come you're traveling out of town all the time? And all the other things women love to say to you. Don't let that happen to you. And if it has started happening to you, kick her out the door today.